All right, everybody, welcome back to the Homestead Cyberium, and today we're going to be going over our introduction to computers. Um, this is more for people who aren't necessarily up to whatever new standards are in computers. This is just a basic introduction, so this is something you probably want to show someone who doesn't really know what they're doing on a computer. Um, let's get to it. So here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, what does a mouse or a touchpad do? What can I do on a keyboard? Understanding what is on the screen, what is an operating system, and why does it matter? And then the basics of the home screen, which is basically uh, the front end of a computer. So starting by moving around the keyboard and the mouse. So obviously here we have our keyboard. This is a standard keyboard with a number pad on the side and also numbers on the top and then the function keys at the top. Uh, so quickly go over what's what we're really looking at. Uh, here we have the escape key used to exit most things, the tab key, uh, very different depending on whatever you're doing. Um, mostly the tab key is to uh, either tab out to a different page or uh, go on to the next selection. The caps lock key at the, uh, below that is basically going to make the letters capitalized or uncapitalized. Shift key does something similar. If you hold it while typing, it'll capitalize your letters. Um, the control key, uh, control, windows key, and alt are all very different, but uh, they sometimes serve the uh, same purpose. So the windows key will always open up uh, what we call the start menu. And the control and alt uh, keys are usually meant for different functions on the computer, on the keyboard. We'll go more into that later. Then the space bar obviously does exactly what it is. It puts a space between whatever words you're typing. Uh, arrow keys are used for, depending on whatever you're doing, going up or down on a file or going up and down on a page. And the numbers key obviously do what type in numbers. And getting started moving around. This is using trackpad and mice. So the right click will mostly act as your action button. And then the left click is usually a menu button. And then we have the scroll wheel, which is used to scroll up and down on a page. Same thing on the trackpad. Left click right here. Right click right here. And then the scroll which is just the same thing, going up and down on the page. Um, so, like I said, I apologize. The left is the action button. Uh, this is how you do things. You select things, you move things, you activate things using the left click. Right click will normally open up an option, uh, or options menu, I, I should say. Um, so let's say you're on the home page and then you right click on the home page. This should open up view, sort by refresh, new. Uh, what this does is this is just like a little menu. Going to new, you get uh, the option to add a folder to the page or add an image or a document or a text document or whatever. Um, this menu can be used for a lot of things, but mostly on the home page, it's used for like adding these folders or readjusting the icons on the back of the page. Quickly go over something separate, um, we have our touch screens. Uh, very similar to using a tablet or a phone. I'm sure we all used an iPhone before. It's just as simple as tapping on the screen. That's how you select things. It is very much a point and click. Uh, so sometimes you can use the on-screen keyboard when using a uh, touch screen is usually what will happen. Or you can attach a separate keyboard um, think of your finger as the mouse that I had just spoken about uh, a little while ago. So quickly we're going to click on this link. So over here um, I, will I will add this link to the description. And over here, you can practice using a mouse. Um, let's, so, mouse size. 
practice use your I guess practice your mousing skills with the following mouse size. Uh, click the Let's Start Mouse Sizing button to begin. So over here it says click on the link below. Hint, look for the number one. So click right here. Now the number two. Right now I'm using a trackpad, not a mouse. So basically this is just getting practice in using the mouse and clicking. So now for some pr precise clicking, we're going to want to click on the 9 in the center between all the 3's. There we go. So for now, I'm going to stop right here, but anyone can always come in and practice using this link that I'm going to have provided in the description below. Alright. So now we're going to go over operating systems for computers, which is basically like the brains of the computers, what the computers run on. The most common is Windows, then Apple. Samsung, and then Linux. So what exactly is an operating system? An operating system is the core set of software and device that keeps everything together. Basically, it's like, like the brain or the glue that's, that keeps everything running on your computer. It's the one big piece of software that, that is running the show. Everything you own runs on an operating system, everything from a smartwatch to your phone to your tablets. Um, and there really is no difference between all of them. It's just personal preference. They all run slightly different. It's whatever you're used to. So over here, uh, we're going to quickly talk about the Apple operating system, or iOS. Um, everyone's used an iPhone before, at least, or at some point in time, someone's used an iPhone. Um, you would probably like the Mac OS or the Apple iOS if you have already used an iPhone before. It's very similar. It can be used in tandem with your iPhone to send me messages or you can transfer files from your phone to your computer. Um, this is like the base, most simple, um, I guess, OS or operating system. And I would recommend this one to someone who's probably new to computers because it's so simple and easy to grasp, I guess. And then now I'm going to talk about Linux. Uh, Linux is by far, I would argue, the least user-friendly one. Uh, it's definitely good to know about. I wouldn't recommend it for someone who's new to computers. Um, it's pretty simple when it comes to downloading programs and very, like, you get an extreme amount of freedom with using your applications and what you can do with them. However, I find it more complicated. There's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge that goes into using a Linux computer. Um, a lot of command line usage. These are things that we don't really necessarily need to get into, but it's good to know. And it's also the least popular of the three big OSs, being iOS, Linux, and Windows. Um, Windows is about five years old. Windows 10 is the current version of Windows that we're running. Um, it's upgraded from Windows 8. It's pretty simple. Um, nothing like Apple, but it's very user intuitive. Um, anyone can grab onto a, a Windows computer and go through it. Um, we'll speak more about it through the rest of this presentation. I'm not going to go into it just like I did with the Apple one and the Linux one, but we'll definitely go over it because we're going to speak about using the, the main menu and the home screen and all that stuff. So now we're going to go over the taskbar, the start button, the icon, the programs, and everything you can click on on Windows 10. So starting over here, let's pretend you're clicking on this button down here, this uh, bottom left button. That's the start button. It's going to open up this menu over here, the control panel or the settings. And here we have all the programs that we can go through. You can either scroll down here or use one of these over here. So this is the base menu of what you're going to see. And all this down here is the taskbar. And this over here is the system tray. We'll go a little bit more into that right now. So um, all of these down here are program buttons. And you also have your search button. Um, the best way to explain it is that these are all stuff that's on the computer that you can open up. This search bar over here 
you click right here and then you type whatever you're looking for, even if it's on the internet or if you're looking for something specifically like a file on your computer. This search bar does it all. So more into the taskbar, the system tray, like I had mentioned, this is just stuff that's running in the background of the computer. If you hit this little arrow, this, this little box should open up and you can see everything on the system tray. We obviously have our clock with the date. Um, and then over here we have our notifications area. Um, and if you have a notification or like an email or something, it will go into this little notification area at the bottom right. More on the start menu. So let's consider this the main menu of the computer. Um, any applications that you recently downloaded will be at the top. Um, on the right we have all of our office stuff. Um, this is like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft Outlook, and PowerPoint. And then quickly, uh, the symbols on the left of the start menu are user at the top. This is your user. Um, your name would be here normally. Documents. These are all your downloaded documents that are on the computer. Pictures, any pictures you put input from your phone or from online that you've downloaded, they're going to be here. The settings. Settings are basically uh, things that you can change in the computer in the background, like the color of the wallpaper or the actual wallpaper itself or, your, or the picture. You could change the user picture. There's so much you can do in the settings. And then power. Uh, power is obvious. You can either restart the computer, put the computer to sleep, or shut it down. So from left to right on this bottom right corner, we have the system tray. Like I said, things are running in the, back, in the background. Um, Meet Now, which is similar to Zoom. It's just a, an application that you use to have meetings. Here we have our battery life. You will only see this if you're running on a laptop, not a computer. Here is our Wi-Fi. Um, you click right here, a little menu should open up, and then you can see uh, different types of uh, Wi-Fi that you can connect to. And then we have the sound, which is this little speaker right here. Uh, you click on this if you want to adjust the volume on the computer. And then over here in the center, we have Cortana. Um, this is kind of similar to Siri, if you've used an iPhone, or Alexa, um, or even any Google product, you can just say, you know, like, hey, Google, whatever, and it'll, uh, you just click here, hey, Cortana, and then you start working on it. Uh, task view, this kind of opens up everything that's open on the computer in one little page. Uh, it's pretty easy to see and not too hard to understand. Uh, it just literally opens up any windows that you currently have open and that you can easily see all of them in, right next to each other. Then that little file next to that is the Documents tab. And then we have Email and Google Chrome. So quickly on Documents. Documents is any files that you've saved in your computer from Word or Excel, any of that stuff. And then obviously your email is your email. And then Google Chrome, which is an internet browser which lets you utilize the internet. And then we have the search bar. Like I said earlier, you can do so much in the search bar if it's looking something up on your computer or looking something up online. So we're going to quickly talk about icons right here. So these are things on your computer that you can use. For example, if I want to use Google Chrome, you will click on this little arrow twice. And then a window should open up and you can use... The internet, basically, you can start by searching something uh, for whatever you're interested in, like dogs or cats or computers. Um, the recycling bin over here is basically where all the trash on your computer goes. If you delete a file, it'll go to the recycling bin. And all of these are Microsoft icons used for many different types of files. Uh, working on any projects, this is the stuff that you'll be using. We'll go more into that later. So like I said, um, spreadsheets, emails, documents, that's all Microsoft Word. 
And then, like I said, the recycling bin. Over here we have VLC Media Player, which is something you use to play videos. And then these are all different internet applications. Uh, they're all similar. It's just preference, but these are all what you use to access the internet. Next, we're going to talk about Windows. So anytime you open up a new page, a window opens. So over here we have one YouTube window open, uh, this another a New Year's page open, and a Facebook page open. These are all different windows. They're all separate from each other. And you can use this task bar menu button down here to access to see all of them at once next to each other. Quickly we're gonna go over tabs. Let's say you're you've opened up Google Chrome and you click this little plus right here and then you open up a new tab. We have Facebook, YouTube, and Google. These are three different tabs. So basically it's a similar to Windows, but you can switch between them quickly. So now we're gonna talk quickly about navigating through Windows and controls for display. So you've probably noticed, for example, right here on the top right, we have an X, a little square, and a line. The X will close the window completely. It will shut it down. Restore down will hide the window, or I'm sorry, shrink it into a smaller size so that you can do other things on the computer, or minimize, which will just hide it. It doesn't close it. It will just put it in the background. Now, talking about power options on the computer, we have sleep, which will won't, it won't shut down the computer, but it will save whatever you're doing, and then stop. Shut down completely turns off the computer um, until you press the power button on the computer again and turn it back on. And then restart resets the computer. Um, it'll automatically turn off and then turn right back on. So I think over here we'll, we're, we're probably done. Um, if you need any additional resources, we have these books, The Computer Basics for Absolute Beginner's Guide by Michael Miller at the Homestead Cyberarium. We also have Laptops for Seniors, um, the IT Support Handbook. These are basically more in-depth explanations of what I explained today. Uh, n it's not n necessary to go through these books, but if you would like, you can. Um, it's only if you really found something interesting on this presentation that I guess you wanted to look further into. Um, if you guys leave any comments, I'll obviously answer them for you guys. And um, please feel free to visit our website, Homestead Cyberium. I'm sorry, Cyberium.org. Thank you and have a good day.